Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Avery, and today we're going to be talking about academic failure. I will be graduating law school in May with absolutely no academic honors. I will not be graduating top 10%, top 20%. I don't even think I'm top half of my class. I haven't even looked at my GPA in a while. In fact, I got maybe Bs. No, I got straight Bs, straight Cs all through law school and got maybe one A minus out of the 30 total classes I took. That's not saying I didn't work hard and do my readings because I did. That doesn't mean I didn't study for my final exams. But today we're gonna to be talking about something that is not openly discussed and specifically the Asian American Pacific Islander community. Perhaps you experience this a lot, but there, there are a lot of high academic expectations we place on ourselves as students, especially students from immigrant families. And today I'm gonna to talk about how I'm navigating what is perceived to be academic failure. And hopefully by sharing the story, many of you can relate as well. But before we jump into this somewhat different type of video today, a short, brief message from our sponsor, Bartleby Learn. Bartleby Learn is your guide to better learning. It has millions of step-by-step -step guides to textbook questions and solutions. It has a vast Q&A searchable library and experts on standby for any topic you can think of 24 seven. You can get one month free using my promo code here in the video and linked in my caption below. This video is going to be structured in the following way. First, I'm going to tell you my story when it comes to academic pressure and trauma, sort of the home environment I grew up in, the background of my mom who immigrated from the Philippines. And then the second half of this video will talk about how I'm personally coping and the steps I'm taking to acknowledge, address, and be okay with my academic failure. So, my story about grades and school. Let's start with my mom, because she's the one who placed a lot of academic pressure on me to get perfect grades. She lived in the Philippines. She was born to a family of 11 or 12 siblings. Her mom passed away when she was super young, so my mom had to take on the responsibility of taking care, uh, taking care of her large family. Her father ended up being an alcoholic, so she really had to bust her butt and earn money to afford toothpaste and bread. They lived in some seriously impoverished conditions. Despite having to work all these jobs, she worked as a maid for very wealthy families in her village. She was still able to go to school during all that time, during all of what she was experiencing. And she would wake up at five, four in the morning to do her homework. And then she would prepare breakfast for the family's children that she was taking care of. She would send those kids off to school. And then during the day, she would go to school herself. Afterwards, she would come straight home, oftentimes leaving school early and missing her afternoon classes to prepare and uh, get ready the dinner. She would also spend the afternoon evenings cleaning those homes that she was a maid for. When she put those children back to bed until about 11 midnight, one o'clock in the morning, she would finalize and finish her homework for the next day. So she, from a very young age, already knew the importance of education. Maybe she didn't know it at the time when she was like 13 and cleaning someone else's home while also going to school at the same time, but she knew in her heart that education was important to her because she understood it could, have been, could be an avenue to help her family uh, get out of the circumstances that they were in. Flash forward to when she is 18, she graduates high school, she never gets to go to college, which I think is the story of many immigrants and their parents, you know, that they just didn't have the money, didn't have the time, didn't have the privilege to go to college. And she desperately wanted to. She finished school at a very high rank, but she met my dad, moved to the United States, and then she had me and my brother. When I was born, obviously I'm the, I'm the oldest of the siblings. I'm the firstborn. In elementary and middle school, my mom harped on me the importance of getting great grades. But I didn't really understand why. I never asked, why do I need to get straight A's? Why do I have to have a 4.0? I never questioned the reason. I just, I just listened to my mom who told me, well, getting a great grade means you're going to be successful in life. There wasn't 
any more explanation to it, not any more details to it. So I just believed what she said and I worked hard. And I did excel. I did well in my classes straight A's through elementary school, middle school. Then comes eighth grade and I get my first B. Absolutely wildly fearful of my mother. Wildly fearful. I was so scared, so anxious to tell my parents when I came home that I got B's on my report card. I hid my report card and lied to my parents. Instead of coming forth and honest about the grades that I got in eighth grade, I believe it was science, getting a B, I hid my report card. Never told them. And all while this was all going on, my brother, who is younger, his grades were not taken as seriously as they were by my parents. He was given a softer uh, approach to his grades. For example, I would come home with A's and maybe one B. Finally got to the point where I, I told my parents, showed my report card, it was the scariest thing in my life. Hangers were involved at some point. Um, yeah. And my brother would come home with like C's and maybe D's and my parents wouldn't care as much. My mom wouldn't care as much. In those moments, again, I just accepted my punishment. I accepted the trauma and the anxiety and the stress it caused me and I didn't ask why. Why was it so important to get these great grades? Then I got to college. I went to Texas State University and this was my first time that I experienced academic failure or I had to quit something that I was told I would be great at, that I should pursue and that was my acting program. After my first year, freshman year at Texas State, I quit my acting program because I was just no longer passionate about it. I didn't feel like I fit in the program and I felt absolutely alone. I had never reached such a deep rock bottom place in my life than when I had quit that acting program, or at least that's what I thought in the moment. I was not going to classes. I stayed at home um, and I got to the point where I finally saw a therapist for the first time in my life freshman year of college, or the summer after my freshman year, because I knew something was wrong with me. I knew that there was just too much pressure, anxiety, and stress that was unacknowledged. So I consulted with a therapist. Now we're here at law school, still a lot of trauma unacknowledged, right? Not addressed. In your first year of law school, all the most law schools will tell you time and time again, you have to have you have to be top 10% to make big law. And for those of you who don't know what that is, big law is uh, like this very wealthy part of the legal industry in which you're promised a very high paying associate position after you graduate law school. And they're very difficult to get. You interview a lot with those companies. And oftentimes you have to be top 10, top 20% to get into those big law positions. But you're working 80 hours a week. People have described it as selling your soul. A lot of marginalized, um, diverse students will strive to get into big law so that they can just simply pay off their student debt. So your first semester, depending on where you end up going, oftentimes the language is, if you're not top 10%, you're not big law. And in my mind, I, said, I thought to myself, if I'm not top 10%, I'm not big law, therefore I'm not successful. That's how I thought about it in my head. And none of the counselors, none of the deans, no one, in the program, except for maybe one person, really sat down and explained to all of the law students that there are so many other opportunities that are out there if you graduate with a law degree. That's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. But I didn't hear it enough. So after my first semester of law school, my grades were uh, published. Your first semester grades are the most important. That's what you're told time and time again that is an indicator of whether or not you're going to pass the bar. It's an indicator of whether or not you're going to get these interviews to get into these big law jobs that pay lots of money. I got my grades back, straight B's. I went from undergrad where I had a near 4.0 GPA, published papers, fellowships, traveled internationally to study abroad. I got grants for nonprofit work, etc. Presented in front of President Clinton. And I think I had like a 2.6, which to some of you might not be horrible, right? Straight Bs might be very normal and average to you. But in that situation, I flipped out. I, 
I don't know. I felt like the rug was ripped out beneath my feet. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I went to law school. Big law, you have to be top 10%. I finished my first semester of law school with straight Bs. What am I going to do? I'm unsuccessful. I'm stupid. I'm ignorant. I'm not supposed to be here. It was hard. And then spring semester came. And to make matters worse, COVID happened. And we went to online learning. And I knew at that point, everything just hit the fan. I experienced academic burnout. I was tired. I was stressed. I was anxious. I was over it. And I decided to prioritize other interests and passions that I had developed during, pandem during the pandemic, which is creating fun educational content for all of you. At some point during 2021, where I was creating content nonstop, I was sacrificing a lot of my time in law school to create this content, to do paid social media campaigns. It was very risky, skipping classes all the time, turning in assignments late. Um, and yet I still push myself to try to finish all of my readings on time, to show up to class, etc. But when I was given the choice between, do you want to, you, you know, finish your paper ahead of time, or would you rather create TikToks and YouTube videos? Time and time again, I would choose the TikToks and YouTube videos. It's what excited me. It's it, it's what brought me joy and still brings me joy. It's what makes me happy. But throughout that whole process, I still felt so much guilt and shame and embarrassment for not utilizing my Juris Doctorate degree in a, in a traditional manner, for not focusing and prioritizing my grades, for finally getting a taste of financial freedom, of making money from these paid campaigns and being able to afford rent, to afford gas, to be able to afford what, food that I wanted, not feeling guilty about stopping by the grocery store to buy snacks if I wanted to. I never felt that financial freedom before when I tasted it in combination with being excited about creating content. I knew that law school was not my number one priority in my life anymore. Pause. We're now going to talk. We're now going to talk about our amazing sponsor today, Bartleby Learn. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Avery, how on earth are you going to connect academic failure and trauma with our sponsor today, Bartleby Learn? Well, the one great thing that has come out of this from being told that grades are important, from studying all the time, is that studying to get good grades does teach discipline and hard work. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there are other avenues to success and learning great habits to be a successful person in whatever industry that you want to be in. One of the great habits I learned when working towards a great grade is to ask for help. A lot of students experience academic burnout because they take on a lot of burden, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure to do everything on their own. But it's okay once in a while to ask for help. That's where Bottle Be Learned comes in. It has millions of um, textbook guides, step-by-step -step explanations of questions in particular textbooks, a vast searchable queue and a library and experts on standby for whatever topic that you are struggling on. Don't waste your time, hours, trying to uh, answer a particular question that you're struggling with. Hop on a bar to be learned um, and see that question broken down in that particular textbook that you're using or talk to an expert to help you learn how to answer that question. Use my promo code, get one month free um, here or linked in my caption below. In a nutshell, I'm not graduating law school with any academic honors and I'm okay with it. I would not have been okay with it when I was 19 or 20. But now I'm 25 and I, I don't want to say that I've experienced the world more, but I certainly think that there's more life than just school. Or at least it's so important to strike a healthy balance, to have passions outside of, say, if you're in law school, if you're an undergrad, if you're in medical school. Because that's what keeps you sane, that keeps you ticking, that keeps you fiery and passionate about waking up in the morning. And maybe that passion and that excitement really is truly just the law. For My computer is attacking me. Maybe that passion or excitement is truly just the law for you. But what ended up being my excitement and passion in law school was teaching others about 
my story and the importance of educational accessibility, diversity, and inclusion. And for that, I'm very grateful for going to law school because if I didn't, I would not have, I wouldn't have discovered that passion. Now, here are the ways that I am coping with not, because I'm a little salty. I'm a little sad. I think back and I'm like, maybe I could have done it. Maybe if I just applied myself, it could have been top 10%. But no, no, it's okay. I'm graduating law school with joy and happiness, a business I created from my own hands, amazing partnerships with Fortune 500 companies. I'm successful in my own way. And I, I want you to be able to, to find that success within your own personal context, within your own personal story. First things first, let's just reword academic failure. Why are we calling it academic failure? Failure. Okay? We need to come up with a different term, but it's not academic failure. At least to me, I'm rewording it to academic curiosity. (laughs) No, that's probably wrong. I I think I'm going to cut that out of the video. (laughs) Number one, reword the way that we are talking about academic failure. For some reason, simply having the word failure in that phrase is sad, disappointing, and really makes me feel like I did something wrong. When in reality, sure, maybe I could have prioritized reading more and concentrating on classes, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I was also exploring other curiosities and and passions. So I wouldn't say it's academic failure. I always like the term failing forward. (laughs) So I'm trying to conceptualize and speak about not getting academic honors in that way. So you need to find a different way to frame not getting the particular grades that you got. Say, for example, you set your goal to being top 10%. You weren't top 10%. You didn't fail. You tried your best. Now let's ask ourselves, how can we go towards that goal, but in a different way? What have we learned from this experience? Number two, talking about learning and asking yourself, what can I do differently this time? It's time to build new habits, right? Um, To me, looking back, I could have been a little bit better at time management. Yeah, I had a lot of things going on. I tried to color code my Google calendar, but there were a lot of times where I felt like I was taking on way too much on my plate at the same time to address potential academic burnout, academic failure. It's really important to strike a balance with time management. And that's a habit I am going to work on towards my larger goal. Finally, number three, you really got to give yourself time to grieve. Academic trauma is real. It's a thing. It exists. Quite frankly, I believe that children of immigrant parents experience it in a very unique way. I feel that I have let down my family. Quite frankly, I went to law school 20% out of fear, but 80% because of my parents. I wanted to do it for my mom specifically. I wanted to graduate with a professional degree that she and my community would be proud of. But the times are changing and there are other professions and other industries that are just as valuable and worthy as being in the legal profession. I just, and you, just have to take the time to grieve and acknowledge that, hey, it's okay not to be perfect. It's okay you might not have made and gotten a 4.0. It's okay if you got a C, which I did in constitutional law. Everything's going to work out the way it's meant to just for you. Okay, so to avoid making this video extremely long, those are the three tips that I suggest you guys go and do or think about doing. If you are in the same boat as I am, comment below if you're experiencing some of this academic stress and pressure. I posted a TikTok and Instagram recently talking about this, being very vulnerable about the fact that I'm not graduating with anything whatsoever aside from like being on a mock trial team wasn't even on law review but i'm very proud of what i accomplished during law school and you should be proud of what you've accomplished so far too if that's simply being able to wake up every morning and go to class and attend i'm so proud of you if that's simply uh, waking up going to class and doing all of your readings I'm proud of you. If that is simply having an undecided major, 
still not knowing what you want to do in your life, but you're exploring and you're taking different classes to figure it out, I'm proud of you. Okay, anyways, before I get emotional, I hope you have a great day. Um, and yeah, thanks for sticking around. Be sure to take advantage of that one month free of Bartleby Learn on me, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.